Uh, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, in terms of today's masterclass, I am going to be talking about how to get your managers to actually manage and save yourself at least a day a week of firefighting. Um, now, in this workshop, I'm going to be talking you through how to get your managers to the position where they are dealing with the day to day issues, where they're taking the initiative, where they're thinking about the future, where they're planning ahead, where they're thinking through the commercial impact of the decisions and actions that they're taking and delivering results for you that mean that you will actually save yourself at least a day a week of firefighting. Um, and I'm going to share with you like how to get your managers to manage to enable that all to happen. Because from what I've seen and from what I experience and what I hear from my clients right now, there are loads of CEOs and MDs out there who feel like the team really are quite a drain on them because they're always needing them and they're not really getting what it is they truly want from their team. Because what they really want is a team who are supporting them to grow the business, who are on the journey with them um, and, you know, who are really getting involved in helping to grow the business proactively rather than this sort of calling on their MD or CEO all the time. So, um, but um, let me just check the chat here. OK, is anybody else getting gaps in the stream? Can someone just let me know that before I go any further? Um, if you are, then that would be great to know. I'll carry on in the meantime. Um, so, look, if you're here today, though. OK, good. I can see some chat. Here, right. So if you are here today, um, look, I am assuming that probably you are probably feeling like your staff are taking a bit too much of your time, that they're wanting too much from you, needing too much input. And they're probably all needing different things from you all in different ways. So what I'm going to do today is a couple of things. I'm going to share with you some of the reasons for that, first of all, to get you thinking about what might apply to you and, and where you are with this right now. And then most importantly, I'm going to go through what it is you can do about it to start improving the results that you get from your team so that you are seeing your teams progress in the way that you want them to progress so that they do the right things. They focus on the right work. They make the right decisions so that they're being commercial as they do that. They're proactively solving problems and so that they're really focusing in on those things that either make you money or are important to have in place because you need them to help you grow the business. So to do that, I'm going to walk you through this model um, and I use this model with my clients and it focuses on three essential areas, leadership capability, leadership enablement and infrastructure. And when you master these three areas and put them all together, you create a management team that really delivers results. So before I do all of that, I'm going to introduce myself. I really do hate a long intro in these sessions, so I'm not going to spend ages on this. But I would like to tell you a little bit so that you know that it's actually worth your time listening to me. Um, so I'm Leanne Bridges and I've spent 30 years leading teams in both corporates and growing SMEs. And during the last last 12 years, I'll get my tongue in the right place, last 12 years um, in particular, I've been advising growing businesses on how to get the best results from their people and teams. And I did that initially as a director myself in a niche gas business that was predominantly a chemical engineering and manufacturing focused business. And we grew that business and team across Europe. And you'll see a picture from those days there, some fond memories. And then um, for the last five years, I've actually been operating my own business, advising CEOs and MDs and senior stakeholders how to do the same and you'll find over 50 recommendations for the work that I've done across social media platforms Google etc um, if you did want to know more then of course um, please feel free and I'd love you to connect with me on LinkedIn um, so if we're not already connected there I actually share daily insights on that platform so you just scan the QR code um, if you can click the more and then to connect with me, that would be best, um, because then if you've got any questions following today's masterclass, then I will happily answer them for you after. So I'm going to get it straight into the good stuff. Um, so from all the businesses that I've worked with and spoken to over the last five years of doing this type of work specifically, I've noticed that there are five common obstacles that prevent managers from actually managing and why businesses are struggling right now to actually grow together. And instead, the CEO or MD feeling like they're having to almost pull teeth when it comes to getting results from their people. 
And so as I run through these with you now, what I want you to do to really get the most from today's masterclass is to think about which of these really applies to you, because that's the first step. OK, we need to think about like, what it is that's actually going on for you. So as I go through, if you can really think about that and if you're multitasking, please do stop and just give me your attention for now. Um, and let's go through these and think about which apply to you. And then if you can type into the chat privately or publicly, which ones you notice in your business. And then we'll take it from there in terms of like what the solutions are to these. So the first one is this. Number one is um, some of your team don't take the initiative. They don't spot problems. They don't think about what needs to be done, what issues need to be sorted out and sort of think ahead to solve problems and what might be coming down the line without you actually stepping in and prompting them. And it could be something operational. It could be a customer issue. It could be a team problem that they just kind of leave in to drag on a bit too long. And it leaves you in this position of firefighting instead of moving your business forward. And because your managers aren't taking the initiative and being proactive, they're actually not asking other people or teams to do what they need from them early enough. And so they're inconvenienced in other people too. And that frustrates these other people in the business. And so not only do you find yourself having to spend too much of, of your time on this stuff, but it also wastes other people's time and it puts other people out. And then as the MD, these people are feeling, they're fielding complaints because other managers or team members aren't being given the notice they need to get things done. And this lack of initiative can keep your company stagnant and stop it from growing or struggling to keep up with current demand even because the business is just relying too heavily either on the MD or just on too few people and my, my clients and the businesses I work with and all the people I speak to are actually really smart people they've got really good businesses and they've often got huge demand for their products or services but they almost can't go after it because they're feeling held back because this team are struggling to grow with the business and keep up so let me know into the chat, you know, is that resonating for you that, you know, it's, is this lack of initiative something you see in your team, always feeling like you're needing to prompt them on things that probably they should be spotting for themselves. So let me know if that's a thing for you. OK, um, so I'm going to come back to the chat in a minute, otherwise I'll get totally distracted and I want us to crack through. We've got a lot to do today. So but do keep typing in. So number two um, is that even though they're holding management team meetings or one to one meetings, these MDs are finding that the team aren't following through with all the actions that they commit to. And these meetings can feel a bit like talking shops because they sort of go around the houses and they kind of get to an action. But then afterwards, if people don't go off, their team can go off and follow up on what they committed to do. And so then the CEO or MD, even though they're certain that they had agreement on what was to happen, find themselves in a month's time with progress not having been made and back in the same position again. Or if it has been made, they might have gone off course or started to get derailed and start going off on a slightly different path. And these team members are like all smart and experienced people. They are, you know, they seem like the right people. And some of them have either done the level of job before. So they really should know how to do this stuff or you would expect it. And some others, maybe they've been with the company or the CEO for a really long time and grown with the business, been promoted internally. They're being paid a high salary, but they're not going off and finding out what they need to to get things done. And my clients say to me, like, no one ever showed me how to do every last little thing. Yet it seems like the MD or CEO is having to disproportionately cajole them, guide them or be chasing them up. So let me know, is that lack of follow through on action something that you notice in your business that you've hold meetings, you've done a one to one, maybe a team meeting, and then you find that people just aren't following through on the actions that you're sure that they committed to. So again, let me know into the chat if that's something for you. Then number three is that some of their team members fall short and even though you've had conversations about what needs to happen instead and the results that you want these do still carry on to fall short on some things um, or if they make changes that you're asking for then it's short-lived and the problem can be that some of these people are key people in the business and you might have or they might have known them for a long time and respect them. And they're certain that they should be able to do the things the way that they need to be done. And they keep sounding 
looking like they know what they're doing, but unfortunately they don't seem to change. And so they leave the one-to-one -one meeting and they just go back to doing the same old thing and the MDs are having the same old meeting 30 days later. So let me know if that's a thing for you where you're having these conversations about shortfalls in performance and thinking that the team are going to respond or that these particular managers are going to respond and they are just really not responding to you. So let me know if that's a thing for you. And then number four, and this kind of sums all this up, and I want to know whether this resonates for you in particular, because it kind of ties everything together, and I see this really often, is that um, it's, it's that there isn't a well-defined leadership approach or framework uh, that allows the team to perform at their best without this need for constant oversight. And the absence of this structure and a clear approach to dealing with people and situations is forcing the MD to be in all the detail. And they definitely don't want to be micromanaging things because everybody knows that's not going to move anything forward. And I'm here today to share with you the framework and the leadership approach using the model that I shared with you just a minute ago, that three pillar model on the last slide, um, the leadership capability that you need, the leadership enablement and the infrastructure, because in all my experience, it's this framework that actually gets managers to manage for you. So that's number four. And let me know, is that a thing for you? you know, do you feel like you might be missing the, a clear leadership approach and framework that actually would enable your managers to manage. And then um, the last thing is, and I see this really, really often, is that businesses are kind of sitting there and just like almost hoping that things will get better. And that's because they're actually really busy operationally and they can't give this the time and the attention that it needs. And so, you know, because that's happening, what that means is that they're never actually going to really get their team to perform at the levels they could have um, or get the business growing at the rate that they really want it to. They're kind of just like hoping that in time things will improve, thinking that maybe in six months time things will get better. Or it might just work itself out. Or I hear this quite a lot when they hire the next person, that's going to ease things and make it better. Um, or maybe if they just put in a few more hours, they'll get over this hump. But unfortunately, it doesn't get any easier or any better without focus. It just doesn't. It just gets more complicated the longer you leave it and the more you grow. So let me know into the chat. I'm going to have a look there now. Which of those five really resonate for you the most? Or is there actually something else that's coming up for you? Because, it, you know, there are more than these five. But I find these five are like the most common things that come up in my conversations in my work. So let me have a look and see what we're going on here. So you're thinking that you're not clear enough. Yeah, I wonder what that's about. There's probably more to that. It's really common to think that, and there's quite often more to that particular thing. Okay, um, you can always think there's, yes, always a reason not to do something rather than do it. Someone was saying to me yesterday, this really made me laugh. They said, have you heard of gunners? I was like, no, I'm thinking, what on earth are they going to tell me now? And it's like, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it next week. I was going to do it. Um, so that kind of always saying that they're, they, are going to do it, but not actually doing it. Time management is something that always comes up. Absolutely. And that actually is about giving them a system for time management um, because people typically aren't very good at it. And there's some really practical ways to do that. Um, OK, number three is constantly just so much to do. Inability to prior prioritise absolutely and then they get overwhelmed and then they quite often do nothing and I don't mean do nothing and sit there and twiddle their thumbs but they almost end up like frozen and stuck in this position I see that quite a lot too um you struggle to get your team to think strategically and there's a lack of accountability yeah okay um so some are saying yes some more than others okay yes definitely they do spot some things, but struggle to is that resolve problems, probably most. OK, so I can see that these are all resonating for you. And look, whichever one it is that is resonating the most today, um, I'm going to give you some answers to this. I'm going to share the steps to take and the process and approach to follow that will get you better results from your team. I could actually spend an hour talking about the comments you've made. I won't. I'll carry on. So and thank you. Do carry on. So. Um, 
Right, there are three parts then, as I've already said. There's leadership capability, leadership enablement, leadership infrastructure. So let's get into the good stuff. Let's get this done. So part one is about how do you develop your leader's capability? So the focus here is on building a management team that can actually really lead, that take ownership, that step up, that guide their teams without needing your constant involvement. And if you're like the CEOs and MDs I work with, you've got a talented management team. You've probably got people that know your business inside and out, but somehow you find yourself in the thick of it all, managing the issues that really shouldn't be on your plate. And you kind of left wondering like this chap here, oh, there we go, <laughs> why is it happening? And, um, <clears throat> You know, they've got the experience, they know their functional areas, yet when things get challenging, it's back on your plate and they're not stepping up in the way that you need them to. The reality is here that there is a gap in their leadership capability because being good at the job doesn't automatically make someone a good leader of people and functions. OK, it's not just about knowing their technical area. They need to know how to lead other people effectively and lead a function. And this is where they're struggling because, you know, doing that, leading people, leading functions is very different from the technical side of the job. Um, and they need something more than what I see quite often, advice or tasks being handed down to them. They actually need the skills to do it. Um, now, in my programme, I go through 16 essential leadership skills that I know from years of experience and the research I've done are key to creating high performing teams and leaders and getting consistent results. Um, and the thing is, before I get into that, the thing is, most people don't need an overhaul. OK, it's often just about making a small but meaningful shift on two or three of those areas. And that is what ends up making a massive difference. It's about subtle shifts that allow them to really perform their leadership role well. Um, I obviously can't go through 16 skills now. We'd be here until four o'clock. Um, but I'm going to share three with you now um, that tend to be missing. And if you notice these are missing, in your teams and addressing them will be a game changer um, and they will be you know these will be areas that you definitely would need to focus on so that you could get your managers to be stepping up so the first is this it is delegating clearly and effectively so that if you've noticed that tasks aren't getting completed on time or results are falling short, one of the reasons is this, um, because delegation won't be happening in the way it needs to so even though your managers might be asking for work to be done what they might find is it's not being delivered to the standard or to the deadline that they actually wanted. And the reason is rarely that your manager or in fact your people are incapable, is that they just haven't learned how to delegate effectively themselves. And so they're struggling to set clear expectations, set out what's needed, set out deadlines in the right way. And I had it recently with a manager um, who worked for a client of mine and his team weren't processing orders in the right time frame. It's a sales processing team. And after he dug into it, it boiled down to the fact that the manager wasn't delegating and monitoring work effectively. The deadlines weren't clear enough. The process wasn't clear enough between the team members and the manager wasn't putting enough focus into what his team were doing. And the MD had naturally assumed the manager would have done it. Um, but once we dug into it, what was going, he, what was, sorry, once we dug into what was going on, he hadn't done that. And once we worked on his delegation skills with him, the change was instant. But it's really common to assume that a manager would do something that just seems so like blindingly obvious to you. And in that situation, having done that work, what it actually meant is he didn't have to hire another person into the team because, you know, they thought that they were under resource in that team. And I have to tell you, I see this all the time. Teams thinking that they've not got enough people, but so often they absolutely do. And they don't say that just to be difficult. It's just that there's a leadership skills gap that's actually causing the problem. So um, getting this delegation piece and this organisational piece is hugely important. So the next piece um, is about addressing performance issues. I think you probably all know this. So very often managers will avoid addressing performance issues, whether that's underperformance, slip deadlines, behavior that starts to drag the team down. You know, managers often feel uncomfortable dealing with it. They don't know how to approach it constructively. Um, but you know, when performance issues are ignored, they fester, they grow, and they lead to more underperformance and discontentment among the team and then potentially they've got you've then got the better performers wanting to leave or they start to take the view of like and I'm sure we've all heard them say well why should I bother I know I've heard that so many times and it just starts to spiral into all this moaning in a culture of negativity 
Um, so to lead effectively, your managers really do need to know how to address these challenges head on in a way that keeps everyone on, in, on track. Because when you handle these conversations really well, they don't just solve the immediate problem. They start to create this culture where everybody knows what's expected of them, where they're accountable, where they feel motivated to contribute. Um, and it, all of that actually keeps the team positive and productive. So addressing these one or two underlying performance issues has a massive ripple effect across the team and the business. And then the third area that I come across most often in terms of missing skills gap is motivating the team. I think we all know, again, leadership isn't just about getting tasks done. It's about creating an environment where people are motivated, where they're energised and willing to go the extra mile. And if you've noticed teams going through the motions or starting to sound a bit discontented, it's often a reflection of the leadership that they're receiving. Perhaps the manager's being overly critical or perhaps they're coming across as a bit aggressive or maybe they just don't know how to motivate and inspire people. You know, people need to feel valued, like they're an important cog in a will, not just a number they need to know that their work really matters and many like technically strong managers do struggle with this to have this skill naturally they don't have a natural ability to inspire and engage their people um, and when that happens like even the most capable people will only reach a fraction of their potential as a leader and their team won't ever really get the results that they could have if they had only been more motivated so how do you develop those leadership capability skills? Well, let me just walk you through an example um, how one of my clients made that shift and built the capability of his finance director. So he actually managed his team. Um, so my client had a finance director, director who was actually really, really capable, but he was struggling with like, the people side of the role. And the MD was constantly pulled back in then to sort out problems, like issues that really shouldn't have come anywhere near his door. Things like complaints about invoices is not being paid or reports that other team members had requested were just taking far too long you know those sorts of things that cause these little problems all over the business and have people moaning about them and it wasn't that the FD was incapable of the technical job it's that he lacked the skills to lead his team to get it done and he'd already done courses on things like time management and people management but these generic courses they're just theories when in fact what people need to do is to be able to actually do these things they need the skills it's almost like reading a book about swimming and then thinking that you could go and swim okay so they really need to be able to do this stuff in practice so what we did with him is we focused initially on understanding what these gaps were in his leadership capability that were that were stopping him moving forward and when we got into it he struggled to delegate properly he avoided addressing underperformance and he wasn't motivating his team so those were the three things for him so we worked through how to delegate in a way that left no ambiguity for the team so that they knew exactly what was required. Um, and then we practiced having tough conversations so that he felt confident at tackling performance issues directly. And we helped him then find a way to inspire his team that felt natural to him because we can't put this stuff on. And um, so that he brought them together and made them feel important in the process and that they weren't just a number. Um, and then over the course of a few weeks, things really shifted there. The FD he started taking more ownership it all became a bit easier he was setting clearer expectations of his team he was leading them confidently and the MD who had actually been on the verge of replacing this person that was what was going on he found that given this support then his FD turned into such a stronger leader and so instead of having to chase him up on all of these things he was able just to leave that alone and the FD would just get on with things so to pull this together in terms of rectifying these gaps in leadership capability it's about getting under the skin of what the actual problem is and solving that and when you do that you don't just get this competent technical person you get someone then that really does take ownership and really does start to truly lead their team and get the most out of them so okay where are we now then so I'll come back to the chat in a second. Um, look, for some of you now, you'll be sat here thinking, recognising some of this. I can see that people are recognising this already. And you might be wondering, like, which of those 16 skills might be causing the issue in your team? At the end of today, I'm going to be offering you some free audit um, calls, some free team audit calls. And on the call, we're going to explore what's holding your managers back and affecting their ability to step up so that you can address those gaps in a targeted way and stop them relying on you all of the time. So if you're if you're interested in that there's a QR code here that you can scan or there's a link there that you can type in um, 
And I've helped so many clients to do this, to help their teams evolve as leaders, get better results from their team. And as you can see here, there are loads of examples of how I've done that with other businesses. And of course, that can work for you too. Um, so there are, I can't remember how many tools I've got, but not very many calls available actually in the next 10 days. So if you want one, then please do grab one. Um, but I want us to move on now and I'll come back to that at the end. So um, the second pillar then that we're going to look at is leadership enablement. So in terms of this, you've built the company this far. You've led your team through all of the challenges. You've solved countless problems and kept everything moving forward. And that's exactly what's got you to the success to this point. But the thing is, as the business continues to grow, what's required from leadership changes because you end up finding that it's not about handling all the issues and resolving them. It's about steering the ship and setting direction and, and ensuring everyone else is dealing with the issues that come up. And it's about shifting your focus to where you can have the most impact to create an environment where other people solve problems independently. And it's about letting go of some of the operational tasks that come your way. And I'm sure you're very happy to let go of too, so that you can actually concentrate on what moves your business forward. You know, setting the strategy, driving the growth, mentoring your team. And the thing is, like your time is the most valuable resource in your business, but we all know how quickly that can get filled up. You know, urgent problems come up and suddenly you've got a day just packed with tasks that need to get done actually other people could be handling and the key to leading through this phase is about deliberately intentionally getting your managers to manage so you can do this strategic work and in all my experience for all the work I do with CEOs and MDs one of the hardest shifts to make is getting your managers to manage and making the move from being in control to managing through those managers and that's because some of the foundation pieces just aren't there it's when you combine all the three actions I'm going to share with you today, this capability, enablement and infrastructure, that it's possible to, to get your managers to manage and feel comfortable taking a step back operationally, knowing that everything's going to be happening. It's about stepping into a new kind of leadership where you move from control to enablement. So from firefighting to future building. And you become the, the leader that your business needs in that phase. And your team becomes the kind of effective, cohesive group that can drive the company forward with independence and confidence. So let me share how to do this now by walking you through how I've done this with the client. So the client I'll talk to you about is an MD of a manufacturing business, and he got fantastic results from making these shifts. Now, if you met him, you probably would think he was already there um, because he actually is like a great leader in so many ways. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. I've got something missing from that. OK, well, we carry on. <laughs> um, his team um, love working for him and he'd created this really supportive, positive environment. But despite all of that, he still found that he was dealing with operational issues for some of his managers that they should have been handling. You know, some of his managers weren't following through on tasks that he really needed them to do, and they weren't holding their teams accountable enough either. And it was starting to slow business progress down. He'd also been avoiding a few tough conversations and he knew that those conversations really needed to happen. So despite the team enjoying working for him and it being a brilliant place to work, like he often heard people moaning about other people or problems. And so after understanding the need to shift his approach to leadership enablement, we took a closer look at the way that he was leading the team and what was working well and what was holding the team back. And so we focused um, on identifying what he was doing that was a multiplier. So those ways of behaving that helped him get results from his team and those things that were diminishers. So those things that were unintentionally limiting his team's performance. And so like one of the biggest multipliers was his supportive nature. You know, he'd created this brilliant environment where people felt comfortable, they felt valued. It is a fantastic foundation. But then there were also his diminishing habits like avoiding tough conversations or not always setting clear enough expectations. And these behaviours, like although they are unintentional, were actually preventing the team from stepping up and being a really high performing team. So what we did is we worked on practical ways to modify his leadership approach to make sure that he his supportive style also drove a 
accountability. And one of the key changes was learning to set expectations in a way that also got the team to be accountable and got them delivering the right results in the right time frame. Um, and then another critical area we worked on was tackling tough conversations that he'd avoided. You know, we approached this in a way that actually allowed him to go into those conversations feeling confident and prepared. And we broke down each conversation into what needed to be said. And then we actually practiced framing that and dealing with the reaction so that it actually started to feel constructive rather than difficult and a bit confrontational. And that was about, you know, making sure that his feedback was landing really well and making it clear to the person that work had to be delivered without undermining that positive environment that he'd built, which was his concern about doing it. But after he'd done the work, um, with me, the team started delivering more consistently. They started thinking ahead about what was coming down the line without needing prompting. They knew what was expected and they felt empowered to meet those expectations. And he got his team back on track and he maintained that supportive culture that he and the team really valued. Now, this wasn't about a massive overhaul. This was about making really small but powerful shifts that transformed the way that his managers performed. And by modifying his approach just a bit, he didn't just drive accountability and ownership in the team. What he was actually also doing inadvertently was role modelling effective leadership, which created a ripple effect. And the team started seeing how to step up themselves, how to lead with clarity, with conviction, how to tackle challenges head on. And this shift has given him time to work on business growth and leave those operational headaches in the past. And it's this kind of deliberate change to your leadership approach that moves you from being in the operational day to day issues to truly driving the business forward and creating a high performing team that isn't dependent on you, but is actually operating independently and confidently and helps you to grow the business. So that's leadership enablement. Um, and we'll move on next to part three about leadership infrastructure. OK, so let me know into the chat, like, what is it you're noticing here? Are you starting to notice that there are maybe some leadership capability gaps in your business? Are you starting to notice maybe there's some leadership enablement um, concerns for yourself or gaps for yourself? What is it you're starting to notice that might need to happen in your business? Just let me know into the chat as I continue on now. But I'm really interested to hear for you, you know, if this is starting to resonate as things that or areas that you need to work on and maybe one or two that are really coming up for you. So part three. So this is about leadership infrastructure. So this is about having the system structures and processes to create the foundation for your team to perform at their best. Lots of MDs and CEOs think that they've got this in place or adequately, but the reality is more often than not, it's actually only partially built. And without the full infrastructure, the business will really struggle to grow smoothly because there isn't this solid framework to work from. And the leadership infrastructure isn't about having a business plan or holding team meetings, or those, although those are points in it, but they are really just starting points. It's actually about building the underlying systems that allow every part of your business to work together in sync. It's about the strategic alignment. It's about communication rhythms. It's about accountability structures. It's about having a, the right business culture that makes sure that everybody's pulling in the same direction without needing this sort of constant oversight. And that's why even though many CEOs think that they set up the right infrastructure, they're still finding their managers are working across purposes or projects are getting stuck, or teams are duplicating effort, it's because priorities aren't really fully aligned. Um, and it's really easy to assume that people know what's expected because it's been discussed, but without this sort of concrete infrastructure, a way to consistently align, communicate, and hold people to account, things get lost. And you just end up then in the detail of it all, trying to sort it all out. So to share with you how this works in practice as a client of mine, he's an MD of an engineering company who faced this problem. He was convinced his management team was aligned with the business strategy, but the reality was different. We dug deeper and we found that each manager had a bit of a different interpretation of what was wanted. And they were all working hard, but their efforts because of this misalignment were scattered because they just didn't have that unified, complete clarity about where the business was going. And also, probably more importantly, like what the top priorities were because of that. So there was some of this, probably not quite like that but some confusion, okay? And the result of that was that there was frustration across teams, there was a bit of misunderstanding, there was a lot of wasted time. Um, and just as an example, they had like loads of pressing issues to resolve in this business. 
but one director was working on a staff engagement app. Now, normally I'd be like wholly supportive of that because I love a bit of engagement, measurement and making sure that we're all moving in the right direction together, etc. But that business just wasn't ready to measure staff engagement. They just didn't have the infrastructure or even the right foundations in place to be doing that then. It just was not a priority. It was really, it's about walking before they could run. And that's where this misalignment was causing a problem because people were just going off doing things that were nice to do. And actually, if you just get the essentials right first, you can do that afterwards. Um, and then people were also missing things because they didn't know what other people were doing. They were treading on each other's toes. And it, so it felt like they were all in sort of separate boats trying to paddle in slightly different directions. And there was a lot of hidden friction and conflict going on and when this is happening you see it because there are like these little squabbles that go on or passive aggressive comments you know those things that you can see are slightly simmering under the surface and in, in this business we use a strategic alignment process to bring everyone together we got the strategy right the organizational culture to a point where it was understood and people could see what they needed to do and actually, probably as important, more important, in fact, how they needed to do it. And once everybody was aligned, we then worked on communication flows to make sure the alignment just wasn't a one off process that got forgotten. Um, and that included simple processes to keep the priorities clear and relevant. Even when things changed, it ensured that everybody knew how to handle setbacks or adjustments without actually having to go back and escalate it to the MD to make a decision, because that's not what we want all the time, is it? And, you know, most importantly, people understood how to behave in that business, because so often it's not what we do, but it's just the way we're doing it that's causing problems. And then finally there, we built accountability mechanisms. So instead of the MD having to check in constantly, he knew at a glance where his teams were, and it gave him the confidence to step back and trust his team to deliver. And as a result, instead of the MD kind of going around trying to fix things and pick things up, the team started working more closely together. There was cohesion. Each manager was clear on their role, what was expected and how their work contributed to broader goals and tasks weren't getting missed or duplicated and everyone had a sense of ownership. And the MD found himself then spending less time on operational issues and he got more than a day back a week that he now focuses um, uses to focus on growth. And again, it wasn't about making a massive change. We infilled existing practices or tidied some of them up so that they were simpler. We completed the infrastructure, which meant everyone was aligned, communication was clear, accountability was embedded as a way of life. And it's those small shifts that made the difference. Um, you know, probably one of the bigger tasks was about establishing and embedded the culture he wanted and, and how he wanted the team working together. That's probably one of the bigger pieces we did. But having done all of that, he started to grow more smoothly. The team was remotivated and he could finally focus on what mattered most to him, which was actually growing his business. And I did that in another business, too. And in that business, you know, one of the changes we made actually resulted in a monthly 350 hour staff saving in time. That was admittedly a slightly bigger business. But, you know, two and a half full timers from just getting this framework right. And the reason was because too many people were involved in too many things. And right now, that business is actually just at the point of reinvesting those hours into growth because they're growing. They need those staff. They don't need to make them redundant. They actually need that time to put into other strategic initiatives and projects. So that's leadership infrastructure. So as we start to draw to the end, if there's one thing that I'd love you to take away today, it's getting your managers to actually manage is about having the right skills, the right environment and the right infrastructure in place to do that. And it's easy to assume, because people do, that these gaps will close themselves with time or that the team will naturally figure it out. But from what I've seen time and again, is that lasting change, real change, requires deliberate focus and the right kind of support. You know, the, the truth is, most of the CEOs I, CEOs I work with or MDs, they've already done the hard part. You know, they've actually built a successful business. They've hired a capable team. They've navigated like endless challenges to get there. But, you know, getting your team to step up to truly lead and to free you from daily firefighting isn't something that will happen without intention now, just like those other things that you've done already. It's about understanding the subtle shifts that you need to make and how to put them into action in a way that actually works for your business. So, OK. Right. Where are we with the chat? Um, so. 
Okay, I can't see anything in you here for a moment. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. So for those of you now who are keen to get this done, I want to introduce an opportunity for you that will help you implement these changes quickly, effectively and efficiently. It won't be for everyone. It will be for those of you sat here thinking, yes, I actually want to fix these things in my company and with my team now and not feel hamstringed anymore by some of these issues. It's for those people wanting to take action. So if you don't want to take action, definitely won't be for you. But if you're sat here thinking that you want to get this working and you want to build a team of managers who actually manage and save yourself at least a day a week of firefighting, wasted time, then the opportunity is this. It's my Business Accelerator Programme. Um, it's a programme that helps you to develop a high-performing team so that you've got a platform and the capability that you need to grow your business from here on in um, and in the program we work across three areas like those I've mentioned I'll talk in a bit more a bit more depth about them though um, so we work through leadership capability enablement and infrastructure um, the program actually starts in this place here um, so it starts with the infrastructure so making sure you've got the systems that enable high performance and growth um, I can't cover absolutely everything that we cover in it but I've got tried to sort of put a good essence of it here for you so one of the things that we'll start with is a strategic snapshot so this is about having clear goals and priorities that people understand and act on the thing I find here is that businesses can really overcomplicate it now they don't do it or they overcomplicate it and people just don't understand it so I Will give you a tool to enable you to do that or a few tools to enable you to do that and what that means is that you'll have a repeatable system that you can actually use year after year to hit target once you've implemented it um, and like many things it's like a lift and drop so I give you the whole framework and some of it's actually filled in for you already so um, it's just a case of actually infilling some of it um, then there's an accountability framework so this is about having a framework to turn your goals into daily actions so that the team can see Consistently delivers results without your constant oversight. Um, then there's a communication rhythm. So this is about how you keep everybody lined up and make sure that they operate smoothly without coming back to you all of the time. You know, when something changes, there needs to be a way that they deal with that so that they're not always then saying, can I just check in on this or just check in on that or get you to make a decision on this? Because let's face it, 90 percent of the time, probably should be making that decision for themselves. Um, so the communication rhythm supports that happening. Then we work on cultural momentum. So, you know, you've probably built a culture that actually you like in your business and that you want to maintain. Um, and this is about actually building on that and making sure that you hone the culture so that it's positive, so that it's customer centric, and so that you've created a really high performing work environment, one in which people can really perform at their best. And then the last part of this is a scalability blueprint. So this is about building the systems and structures that you need, that your business needs, so that as you grow, there's a sustainable, scalable operation that you can um, scale up as you start to expand. So that's the first part of it. The second part is leadership enablement. So this is about empowering your team to deliver and actually freeing up your time. So in this um, part of the programme, we look at leadership skills mastery. So we identify your leadership multipliers and diminishers. If you remember when I was talking about um, this before, there are these things that multiply um, the way that we lead people and actually help. And there are things that get in the way. And we'll actually look at how you amplify your strength how you close the gap on the diminishers and so that you lead effectively in every situation. Um, and what I find here is that there are some sort of like really typical ones around managing performance that people want to work through. So help people get really good at having like difficult conversations with their team. Um, quite often there's um, people are repeatedly asking for things and I help unpick why that is and what you do about it. So there's lots that you can do in there. Um, but those are just a couple of the things that quite often come up. The second part is about behavioral intelligence. And this is about actually understanding people um, <laughs> because I think lots of people say to me oh this business would be so easy to run without people I hear that time and again and that's just because we don't understand human behavior nobody ever teaches us this stuff and so in this part of the program I will share with you what you need to know about human behavior and emotional responses so that you can confidently manage situations I've got here from anger to tears you know these situations where someone's reacting so that you know what to do with steady control and empathy and that you can actually get them back on track focused productive so they're actually doing the job for you because when those situations come up they can really derail 
either the person dealing with it or the team because there's like lots of emotion going on there. So we'll work on how to deal with that. And the third aspect is CEO performance optimization. So this is about overcoming any limiting thoughts you might have because we all have them. We all have those times when we're like, I'm not sure if I'm able to do this specific leadership thing well enough um, or the worry, the stress. And we will strengthen your mental resilience so that you don't lose time to distraction. And by that, I mean, you know, those times when you might be overthinking how to move forward on something or playing a conversation out in your head and not having it and actually help you overcome that so that you just go off and get that stuff done rather than think about it for too long and then the third area that we would work across is leadership capability so this is about developing your team and your management team so that they're consistently delivering results so a lot of this will have happened already by virtue of some of the things we'll have done in the, the first couple of areas um, but what we'll do then is we'll do a skills gap diagnosis so we'll identify the skills each leader needs to improve um, and we'll uncover the root cause of those performance problems. And we will use a targeted checklist to do that so that it's very easy and simple to do. And in terms of that, you know, there are 16 areas that took me years to refine. And, um, and some of those skills actually have come from some of the leading organisations around about what is required to create high performance. But I've distilled them down into something very practical for you to use. So we would do that to start with. Then we would create your own leadership toolkit. So this is about me offering you tailored guidance to work through situations, but also tools so that you can quickly close those gaps with your team and have a repeatable business as the business grows. So if there's a specific gap that you need to plug, I will give you a tool and show you how to plug that for yourself. And what that means is, as your business grows, you look invariably, these things will come up again with somebody else. You will have a way of dealing with it instead of relying on external providers or other people, you will very quickly be able to nip things in the bud moving forward. Um, and I know I had an issue with this um, recently with a chap where he had a really complex situation to deal with, to deal with a couple of people that were um, reacting badly to each other and neither of them performing. And he had to deal with the manager who had to deal with the other person. And I very quickly explained to him why that was happening, what he needed to do. And we went through the conversation and he's had it and dealt with it. Whereas before he would have just swept that under the carpet and hoped it had gone away because those sorts of things can be really hard to deal with. And then the last part of this is about capacity for growth so this is about actually how do you attract retain and develop the right talent and have a clear succession plan in place to ensure that as your business grows you've got the leadership capacity that you actually need in it because your business will only grow as much as you have the capacity in it um, you know which you already know so there are four key um, program components. So in terms of what you get um, or the way that this is delivered, that's delivered through two one and a half hour coaching and mentoring sessions a month. That's myself and you to develop your skills, help you implement the tools um, and give you tailored support along the way. Um, that's bespoke to you. So if you've got some current challenges, we would and quick wins that you want to achieve and we would do those first and then we'll gradually build through like the rest of the things that need to happen. So we will always deal with any immediate concerns first and then we'll be working at the same time then on all of those other elements that you need to bring into your business. Um, I also give you in the programme toolkits and frameworks, processes, checklists, loads of things that um, are just guaranteed simple ways to get quick results. And then there's a WhatsApp channel for ongoing support. So that's just a direct line for quick questions and support so that you just keep momentum between sessions and you don't get stuck on things because I hate people to get stuck. I want people to keep moving forward. And then accountability. Um, so there's structured accountability to make sure that you stay on track um, and that you implement all of these things and that you make consistent progress. Um, in terms of the results the programmes get, they get great results. There are loads of testimonials all over social media and Google, so you can go off and have a look at some of those. In terms of the programme, it's a six month programme. You need three hours a month for it. Um, and that's for the coaching and mentoring sessions, because anything outside of that are things that you would be doing anyway um, in your role. And so there's not like a whole load of studying. It's practical. It's well paced. It's actionable because I know that you're busy. You know, I've worked in business. I've worked in businesses that are growing and that are in these sorts of positions. And I will support you over those months to make the shifts you need to get your managers managing in a way that is manageable for you, too. And so it's a blend of mentoring, guidance, coaching, as well as all the frameworks and all of the support that you need. Um, 
so that you don't get held up as you implement all of these things. So for those of you that are excited for that and would be interested in discussing that with me, then I'm offering um, the team audit calls today, as I've mentioned to you before. On the call, we will discuss where your team are now, the results that you'd like, and then we will map out a plan for you to get there. And you can ask me any questions that you like about the programme. In terms of the calls, I've only got a limited number available right now, and I've actually only got two places at the moment on the Business Accelerator programme. This is not a high volume programme, I don't take loads of people into this. I take the number of clients I can offer a really good service to. So if you know that you want one of those places or you think you might, then I'd encourage you you to book an earlier call rather than a later call. Um, I think there are a couple this week and then there are some at the end of next week possibly. Um, so yeah, if you think that you want one of those calls and you and you probably want one of the places on the programme, then just try and book one today or tomorrow. Um, so that's that. I really hope that that's been helpful to you and I'm going to open up for questions now. Um, so let's come across to the chat and have a look and see what questions we have got. So let me know what questions do you have from today's session? Really happy to answer anything. Where are we for time? We've got 10 minutes. So um, we've got a good amount of time left. So let me know, quite often people, wait a minute, if you've got a question you don't want to answer, skip publicly again, feel free to pop it privately to me, I'll read the question out and I'll answer it for you. Um, I'd be really happy to help you with anything that you want to ask me now. So these questions do take sometimes a couple of seconds to come through on this webinar system. So let's have a look. Um, look oh, I've missed some of these comments from earlier, actually. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so you're saying difficult conversation capability definitely needs to be developed. Oh, it, it is the biggest thing I think I work on with people um, is how to do that, because there is there's It's just there are so many component parts to that that you really need to understand, because it's not as I think sometimes people go off and train. And I know someone said to me, they've gone off. I went to see the provider and done this sort of like how to have difficult conversations. And they got given sort of the process. And that's great, but we could all Google the process, really, couldn't we, if we wanted to. Um, but it's actually like, how do you deal with the dynamic? And that's the thing. That's the thing that I spend the most amount of time actually dealing with people on, is how do you deal with that dynamic of what goes on and helping them really understand what is going to be a useful thing to say in those situations where you sort of feel a bit panicked about what on earth am I going to say now? How am I going to get this to a place where we're going to move forward? Um, OK, I'm not quite sure. I think number one has the biggest impact on the team overall. Not quite sure what that means. I'm obviously not in the right place for that piece. Um, if anybody's got any questions, do ask them in while I'm just looking through some of this. You struggle to get your thing, team. Oh, we've covered that already. OK. OK. Good. I think that's probably most things answered that are in the chat. So just let me know then. Anybody got any questions? I can see there are a lot of people still on the call. So obviously there are some questions or you're just hanging on to see what's asked. But um, anybody got any questions that they'd like to ask me now? Really happy to answer for you. Yeah, there are still loads of people here. So um, if I don't get any in a minute, I will just close the call down. But um, Let's see if we get any come through. OK, so it look like any. So that's really unusual. Definitely not any questions people want to ask. What's going on here? Oh, I've got a booking. Um, lovely. I should turn my watch off before I start these presentations. Right. Ah, here we are. Do I do any group coaching sessions? I do do group coaching sessions. Um, I do various different things. Um, it's probably something to have a conversation around. Um, so I do management team coaching. Um, I also have got a good group coaching program that's on something slightly slightly different. So it depends what it is that you're looking for, I think is the answer. So if you want to either let me know now and I'll answer it for you now or um, I book into a call and we can talk about what it is you're thinking that you want um, and move forward from there. Because what I will do is um, if you talk me through what it is you're thinking and what you want to achieve, I'll also let you know whether I think that's going to be 
um, or we can talk about whether that's going to be the best way to achieve it. Um, because sometimes I know I had this on a conversation recently with someone where they were asking me to deliver something and I just didn't think it was right for them um, because, uh, you know, sometimes the way that we have done things I don't know, we think things need to be done, isn't actually the most effective and sometimes not even the most cost effective way for you to do it either. So I'll just give you my honest opinion about whether that will work for you, whether I think it won't. So, um, yeah, if you let me know what those group coaching sessions are that you're looking for, then happy to give you a steer on whether I could do it, whether I think it will work and then how that would look for you. OK, so I can't see any more questions coming through. There's still loads of people live, though. What's going on, people? Anyone got any more questions? anybody got any more questions happy to answer okay right i think i am going to then shut the call down for today if you've got any questions then um fire them over to me on email if you want to um dm me on linkedin um then do that i'd be really happy to answer any questions that you had from today that maybe you haven't asked already or afterwards you think oh we should ask that particular question um but other than that look thank you for your attention thank you for staying throughout the presentation it's been really great thank you for your participation um and um i'm sure i'll see you somewhere soon across social media so take care for now thank you very much everyone